What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and the Office 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at the action, which is Get Mail Tips for a Mailbox V2. So this action allows you to get some information about a specific mailbox that you pass in. And this could be information about how many people have access to the mailbox, or, or automatic replies and out of offices and things like that. So let's take, take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. Um, I have a trigger, which is when an email arrives. I'm just going to run this from a previously run flow. Uh, I don't need to send an email or do something. Uh, we're just showing uh, information about a specific mailbox and things going in. I can click on New Step. And then I can either just search for Office 365 or just try and find it from the list. I'm just going to search for it and find this one. Office 365 Outlook. We can scroll through the list of actions until we get to get mail tips for a mailbox v2. So we click on this one. It has a single required parameter, which is the email address. Now, there's a couple of things you'll know about this is this is an email address. We can use some dynamic content if we want to. So we could have this trigger from a when a new email arrives. Maybe we want it as the email that's come in. Maybe we want it as the uh, email that's been received into. Either way, we can kind of configure this. Um, I'm just going to type an email address into here for my testing purposes. So I can write uh, matt.collins at I can just put that email address in there. Uh, and what I'll do is it'll look up that email and it will return things to me. Uh, this isn't my email address, by the way. This is just a, a testing tenant that I have access to. I do have the ability to add a new item. So this is one thing that I really like about some of the recent updates to Power Automate is that it's trying to make this, this a little bit easier for the users. So when you add a new item, you can get another item in there. What that does in the background is that that switches it to an array and allows you to put stuff in. So as we can kind of see, it says the second one is null at the moment. If I delete this, we have an array which is like this. This just saves the user from having to type something in an array format, especially if they're not too familiar with arrays, um, or you may you know get something wrong as you're typing it out. Um, so it does allow for an easy input, but what the array does is it does allow for expansion. So if you don't know how many email addresses you're going to get into a response, instead of using the, the single one here, you can switch it to an array, your dynamic content goes in here, and it'll just expand or contract based on the number of uh, results that you have or entries into this. So I think it's really useful. Anyway, we're going to click on this and then we are going to test this out. So we'll click on test. We'll run this from our previous run action. We'll hit save and test. And that'll run off and it'll give me some, some data. So it's run successfully, which we can see. And this is the data that we've got. So we've got a few pieces of data here. We've got mailbox full. So this could be a good thing to know whether the mailbox is full, especially if you have a shared mailbox or some, some other mailbox uh, to get a warning or, or message about there. External member count, zero, so there's no external people um, in this one. We have a total member count, one, because that's my email address. We've got a few other things like delivery restricted, mess max message size, etc. email address. Um, I think it should really pull through my name here. I'm not sure why it doesn't, but um, names in there. And we also have automatic replies, and that's kind of a, a blank um, array there. So that's what that kind of looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to add on uh, another account, uh, another email address. So this is one that is a SharePoint site, and I've got an Office 365 group site or Microsoft 365 group site, uh, and that will contain uh, more people than just me because a SharePoint site has to have more than one admin. Um, <clears throat> what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you. Um, so if I switch that to an array, you can see two emails in there. It's nice and easy. Um, I'm also going to turn on my out of office in my Outlook. So this is Outlook Web. I'm not using it at the moment for testing. If I go to the cog and click View All Outlook Settings, I can go to Automatic Replies, and I can specify an automatic reply. So I can turn this on. I can say only send for this period, and I can say okay, only send between now and Sunday at uh, 12:30. 
Um, I just noticed this today, like these cool new features blocked my calendar for this period, automatically decline new invitations that occur, that occur during this period, decline and cancel my meetings during this period. Those are going to get used quite frequently in the future, but it's just something that I've just noticed. So yeah, I've got this message here that says I'm out of the office this week. Um, uh, you know, I can put anything else in there. Um, thanks for your message sort of thing. Uh, and I can save this. Once that's saved, I get a little notification that it's saved, and we will run this flow. So we'll go out to Power Automate. We'll click on Test, and we'll Save and Test. And we'll run. So I wanted to show you what the automatic reply looks like, as well as another mailbox. So we can see it's run on these two mailboxes, which is great. So the top one is my Matt Collins one, which I've just set the automatic reply on. And now instead of a blank array, I've got this. So it says message, and then it's got some uh, HTML formatting in here. Um, and it's got, uh, I'm out of the office this week, thanks for your message. Oops, too far. Uh, and then we can see some other information. We've got the locale, we've got the display name. This is really cool. We get the scheduled start time and the scheduled end time of that out of office. So it knows when this message is going to start and when it's going to end. You could potentially use this information to know when someone might be back in the office and then schedule a meeting for that time. So we did see those new options in Outlook that allow you to block your timeout. If you haven't selected those, or if this is like in the past, um, you may not have put things in your diary to say, yeah, I'm not available at that time. People might try and schedule meetings with you. Using Power Automate and using this mail tips action, you could potentially look at what is a what is an out of office for most people. That's why they have automatic replies. And you can um, schedule a meeting in for the next availability. After that, maybe use this in conjunction with the get calendar sort of stuff and try and come up with a great uh, next scheduled time for a meeting. So it's really cool. I really like this, and even using the time zone in UTC. If I scroll down a bit further, I get to the other mailbox. So here we get the total member count being two. Uh, in my top one, the total member count is one. So in the one at the bottom, that is an Office 365 group, which has a email address, uh, and that email address has multiple recipients, me and uh, my colleague in there. And then we can see some other details and that one doesn't have an automatic reply in it. So as you can see, this action gives you loads of information about a, a mailbox. I think this is really useful. I think there's a lot of cool features inside of here. Um, but as always, I want to know what you guys think. Do you use this at the moment? Do you not use this at the moment? What do you use it for? Is there some cool functionality that we could build with this sort of stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, hit the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next time.